Welcome back to the Tidarium Hangout. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with a 2020 Masterpiece Transformers Buyer's Guide. And this was a request from a viewer. I think it's an excellent idea. I wanted to do something similar to this, but now I kind of went a different route. And seeing as how many figures and characters and options exist, today I'm only going to do the Autobots because, well, that's already overwhelming enough, so let's get right into it. First out of the gate, I want to start with Optimus Prime. And the thing is that Optimus Prime is going to be the centerpiece of your collection, so you have to have a good looking figure. And my recommendation is going to be the Takara MP44. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, it. some people have problems with their knees and paint chips, which I have had none of those issues. Uh, in the middle, you see the Transform Element, and a lot of people love that thing, which I was surprised. On the right, you see Magic Square, and I really think if you're going in the Toon route, uh, any of them would work, but you could always wait for the KO. The KO's coming, and you could get the MP44 with die-cast metal improved joints. All the stuff's allegedly going to be fixed for a fraction of the price, quarter of the price, third of the price. By the way, I don't know anybody that spent the 450 on this, uh, on, the, on the official version. If you do, let me know. I think everybody got it a lot cheaper somewhere else. Next up on my list, I want to talk about Wheeljack. I would go the official Takara because I don't really know of another Wheeljack that was made. And I would actually go the plus route because I like the tune look. Now, you can't go wrong with either one. There are pluses, <laughs> pluses and minuses to either one. And you can get the KO of the first one. I don't know if the plus ones have been knocked off yet so much since the KO environment has changed a lot since my end of KO video. So that might be a situation, but I do like my Plus so much that I would re recommend the Plus over the original. There it is. Next up we have Sideswipe and Red Alert. For Sideswipe, I recommend to get the Takara version or even the KO for this one, the Plus is not the greatest version. In my opinion, the Plus has the least number of improvements versus the original versus any other Plus figure that they made. Now, with this, I would say Bad Cube for Red Alert. The Bad Cube mold is pretty cool, but I think it really matches Red Alert a lot better. And I like looking at different styles of the same type character. I don't want to see the Sideswipe mold in a seven different colors on my shelf i really like to see a slightly different variation bad cube offers that and there it is next up we have prowl and smoke screen and of course all of them that use this same mold i would go with takara i would say the plus get the plus treatment for the prowl if you can or you can get the ko of course all the takaras have, have a ko floating around of them right now it seems like Seems like 99% uh, of Takara product has been KO'd, so there's that, and you get it cheaper. But I like the blue windshields. I, I, everything that's been plus that I've bought so far, I've really enjoyed. Uh, I think Sideswipe's the least impressive, but this one is very impressive. And also, I did not get the plus of smoke screen. I don't think it's that big of an improvement. Most people love the face on the smoke screen as the major improvement, but uh, I still like my original one, so it's not that big of a deal to me. And I want to talk about Sunstreaker, and uh, this is a picture from Andrew when he was doing his Chosen Prime. Seems like Chosen Prime has used a few different people through there. There's a new guy who does a great job too, Chosen Prime. So with this, on the left you see Omnigonix, in the middle you see Bad Cube, on the right you see the Takara. I would recommend the Takara over all of them, even if you get the KO, which is actually what I have. I don't have the official and my KO, I've had no issues. People try to say there's a lot of issues with the KO. I don't have one issue with mine, so it works fine, it transforms fine, it looks fine, and the plastic feels strong. Onagonic Spin Out is one of the worst figures made for QC and Bad Cube. It looks good, but you know what, I gotta admit, it's worth the jump, and I have all three of these. Now that's X Transbots, I would go with it, and it's a good figure. It's it, The character is 
kind of one of those characters that I never had any relation to. In fact, I got the X-Transbots one before I even picked up a, a G1 version. And I now I have a G1 version, but I had the X-Transbots one first. Thought that was kind of funny to get the Masterpiece version before the G1. So, looking at Trailbreaker and Hoist, for Trailbreaker I would go with x Transboss Aegis, and for the Hoist I would go with x Transboss Peon. Now, the thing is, I went out, I was thinking outside of the box, and I got a clearance cell on MMC's version of Hoist, and having MMC's Hoist next to x Transboss Trailbreaker, x Transboss Trailbreaker is way better. Either version is better. Now they have a Tune one, which I have that one and the other version. I suggest x Transbots for both of these. They have diecasts, and if the Peon feels anything like the Aegis or the Trailbreaker, it's just going to blow MMCs out of the water. MMC looks okay, but feels super cheap and light, like it's going to break, and I like x Transbots better. So the only tracks that I've seen that's made is Takara. I would get the Takara tracks. Get the KO. I have the KO. The KO, if it's if you're still available, if you can still find that run, it was actually an improvement because it had rubber tires and a few other things were better about it, I guess. But my KO, I never had any trouble with it. People complain about the gap in the backpack and blah blah blah. Whatever. It's a beautiful figure and it makes that character look outstanding on the shelf. I would love to see fans toys make one and see how they would improve it. But aside from die cast and weight and paint, this thing looks amazing. So next up, Mirage. Uh, we have Fans Toys and Transform Element making theirs. I, I got to tell you that I never really liked the Sphinx. Uh, I think it was MMC made their Sphinx. I never thought it was a great figure. I thought it was subpar. It was okay. I heard a lot of people raving about it. And I passed on it the first run. I finally bought it the second run. Just because I watched everybody rave about it. And when I got it, I was like, eh, it's alright. I think both of these will be better than the MMC Sphinx. And I, I just think Fan Toys will just be slightly marginally better than the Transform Element. And the Transform Element's already done a great job with their Prime. Everybody loves it. I bet you everybody's going to love this guy. And TE will beat FT in release date. Next, I want to talk about Jazz. So, when you look at Jazz... On the left you have Make Toys, on the right you have the Toy World, and if you buy the Zeta, it's the exact same thing down to the Paint app. So Zeta didn't do anything different with it. So Zeta and Toy World's the same, and Make Toys. I would suggest the Make Toys, but either one is fine. Make Toys is slightly better, you know, maybe 20% better. Maybe it's 20% better. So the thing about this is Fan Toys is making one, it's so far out. It may be up to three years away. People say, oh, it's going to come in 2021. I don't think so. So get a Make Toys. Get it on your shelf. When Fans Toys comes out, whatever. You could sell it if you like Fans Toys better. But here's the thing. When Fans Toys comes out and sells out and goes to three, four, five hundred dollars for the figure, you're going to get your money back out of this thing. Easy. So... I would suggest make toys right now, enjoy it on your shelf, and there's where we are in 2020. Ironhide and Ratchet. Gotta go with the official Takara. Obviously there's KOs. The official Takara is like $130 or something crazy. Uh, well, which was crazy back then. I mean, that sounds like lame pricing for nowadays. And they are not the best. I'd love to see another company make another shot at it, take another shot at it. But if you get a Shadow Fisher kit and get rid of the side skirt, hip skirt things, it'd make a lot better. So Inferno and Grapple. My recommendation is to get a Takaro Inferno and an MNC Grapple. Or flip that script and get a Takara Grapple and an MMC Inferno. Here's the thing about it though. The MMC Infernos can be found for like 60 bucks. No, oh, the, the Grapples for MMC could be 60 bucks. The MMC Infernos are still commanding like 100 bucks or more. And you could get, for the same price, the KO of the Takaras. Yes, yes, I sound like I'm pushing KO. I'm just giving you the options. I'm telling you they're out there. I'm not pushing them. I don't have an agenda. All right, let's talk about Hound real quick. Takara Masterpiece is the only way to go. There is a KO coming. Uh, I've, I've got it pre-ordered. I will tell you, this made my 2018 figure of the year at first. 
The only downside is I did break a small piece on mine. It's it doesn't make a difference in either mode whatsoever. But I did break something on it. Uh, the the plastic is cheap or whatever. It's bad plastic. Hopefully the KO makes it better. The KO maybe it'll have some die cast in it. Who knows? Uh, I am getting the KO. I am not happy that I broke mine, but in the end, you know, so many people had so many issues with it. It still looks amazing on my shelf, though. Like, I didn't try to send it back or get my money back or anything, because it looks so good on the shelf, and I got a pretty good deal on it, so. So, Jetfire, now this is a tough decision to make, so I'm looking at all the Jetfires, and I'm thinking, which one do I really want the most on my shelf, and I have all three. Ha <laughs> Fans Toys obliterates the competition. I don't care what everyone else thinks. I know for a fact the fan is the best. It looks the best and I actually have the X now. I'm going to do a comparison between the X and the original and there are some differences uh, but um, that's coming. I don't want, I don't want to commit to a date or anything but I want to say Dakotoy's Kronos in its day was the best looking one out there. It still looks good. You can tell it's Skyfire, Jetfire, whatever. And it was commanding $400 for a while, the price point. Does that sound familiar to the Fans Toys version? And then the Commander Class Hasbro version of Skyfire Jetfire is a great figure. A lot of people use it for a stand-in. I think it does work on your MP shelf if you want to go the budget route for like $80. Uh, I'm shocked how good Hasbro did with that figure. Next up, I want to talk about Dinobots real fast. And I got Giga Power pictured up top. I have the... Some of the fan toys ones on the bottom. And the thing about this is that if you want super tune accurate, I would suggest you go with fan toys. But they are pricier. I would think fan toys are two, three, and in some cases four times more expensive than the Giga Power counterpart. The Giga Power, Giga Power counterparts look amazing. I didn't see why. I was like, why are they even bothering? Because Fans Toys is cornered the market on Dinobots. I see why. They're slightly bigger. I'm a fan of the Giga Power, and I will eventually get one of each Giga Power, and I just keep my extra Fans Toys just for fun. I'm not I, I, I'm not such a Fans Toys fanboy that I gotta have the Fans Toys, but the Giga Power does a great job. The Giga Power is a little stylized. I kind of don't like the little bit of stylization they have, but it works, and on my shelf, they look amazing, and I currently have a hodgepodge. Right now, if you want city bots, the only real options are to go with the Titan class, Hasbro, and they're good. Now, I, I have a sinking feeling if there's another Titan class figure, it will be a Metroplex. But the Metroplex right now is commanding a hefty price in the secondary market, and the, Met the Fort Max, is, it's going up. It's getting more expensive. But they go, they look good. They're two foot tall. They both look good. I mean, not, not amazing. And the Fans Toys one is going to cost more than both of these combined, times two, times three, and will probably be five years or so till it comes out, if it comes out. Getting into some Autobot mini bots here in the buyer guide, Sea Spray. I think that the best one is X Transbots, which is in the middle. On the left, you see Fans Toys first shot at it, and it's a swing and a miss. And the right is Toy World, which I, I like this bulkiness. Toy World actually matches the uh, animation the best, but I do like what x Transwas did, and I still feel the same way. It's the best one. It probably will always be the best one. So the best Huffer, in my opinion, so far is Bad Q. Hard to find, I know. That's still the best one out there. You can go to Final Victory for pretty cheap and easy, and I'm going to show you that option here in a second. But the thing is, Fansways is going to make theirs. I don't know how good Fansways is going to be, so that is an issue. People have already spotted some issues uh, just with the pre preliminary pictures that Fansways might have. So we're going to see that when it comes out, and that's still a bit down the road. I still say Bad Cube is going to win. Trying to accelerate this a little bit. If you look at this, I think you could get this set for Final Victory and fill out three characters for now and have a brawn, you can have yourself a huffer, and then you can upgrade down the road if you want to. That's what I did, that's what I would do if I was making suggestions, which I am, and I think that brawn looks great. 
I think their Huffer looks fine. Their Warpath, I think, is the least best of the three, and it's still not horrible. Speaking in accelerated terms here, Warpath from Fans Toys, I love it. It's great. It has an E-issue. You can get the screw from your third-party provider that fixes it. It's super easy fix. No big deal. I think their brawn will be better than Final Victory when it comes out. It's coming out soon, actually, so that's a good one. Also, so for Gears, it's got to go with Bad Cube Grump, and then, of course, the repaint like we had back in the G1 era. So far, it's the best one on the market. He looks amazing. I mean, they, he was a $60 figure. Now he's, what, $200? I don't know. It's crazy. Every time Bad Cube reissues something, it gets cheap, and then it gets expensive again, but... I don't know if Bad Cube's in the market for reissuing their stuff anymore. I don't know what happened to them. I really don't. I wish they would reissue because they have some of the best things. DX9's Riptofen is the Power Glide option I would go with in the Minibots. And Power Glide and Warpath, I don't feel like they should have been Minibots. I felt they should have been a lot bigger. But it is what it is. And we live with what we live with. And look at the lower legs there. Those things fold down and, and, and become feet, whatever. But this is a great option, and I just wish he was a little bit bigger. X Transbots is the win for Wind Charger here. This guy looks great. Uh, well, he's really the only one out there. Feet are kind of an issue. The transformation's not so much fun. And maybe Fans Toys will take this on in 2026. I don't know. But for now, this is the best one on the market. Really the only one on the market, and is repaint. So, looks good. So, Bubble Bee is going to have to go to Takara, in my opinion. Uh, Takara is better than Takara. See, now Takara did an alright job, but then Takara came out and did a better job. But even though there's still issues with Takara... Okay, enough being funny. The first version, I always felt like he was too funny looking. I just didn't feel like he was right. The second version, I like it a lot more. I don't care what everybody says about the feet and the back and the whatever and the, and the side view. I look at mine every day and when I look, it, it is almost a centerpiece. I think it's a great looking figure. If One good thing came from the first release is that you got the spike in the exosuit, which is a good looking spike in exosuit, a bad performing spike in exosuit. The joints are not well tolerance. They don't stay together. They fall apart. The transformation sequence would literally sever his limbs, but it's cool to have it. I have them in my display, and I'm glad that I have them, and that makes the first release worthwhile. Next up, we're going to talk about Cliff Jumper. I want to say that you look to the X Transbots Toro. In my opinion, it's the best looking one. Some people said you could pull the pin out of his backpack and take his backpack off. I wouldn't suggest that. I actually got the Ace uh, version Ace 01 Tumblr, and I thought I could get by with it and be okay, but I think Toro's better. And then the MMC Helion, I, I never really thought it was that great looking, so I never picked it up. So I can't speak to it very well. But I do want to say that there could be a better option coming. Toro's the best on the market for now. So, looking at combiners real quick, if you want your combiners to be in combined mode right now, I, I'm telling you, you could just get the Zeta and be done with it. 400 bucks, you can get the new upgraded paint version and, you know, be ahead of all of us early people. He looks good, but if you want to get him in bot mode, you're going to have to go with Fan Toys. For Defensor, I would say get the Generation Toy, but here's the problem, it's not all out yet, it's not all done. Uh, maybe I shouldn't recommend something that I haven't handled. I don't know anything about it. I've even seen a review. I'm just saying it's the biggest one, and bigger's better, right? And it looks good, but I don't know anything else about this set. But if I were to get one, that's one I'd go with. Hopefully Zeta, x Transbots, DX9, or Fansoys makes one to the full-size scale soon. Right now, Warbitron's the only Computron. I think it's too small for the modern if you're going with the Zeta size uh, even if you're going with the Jim Cat oversizes I mean this thing is just too small but it's the only thing out there so if you want one you could like prop it up so that heads are aligned and they look the right height but it's still a bit stylized I would love to see this figure made 
buy one of these other companies in the right size and be Super G1. So for Ultra Magnus, you got to go with the Takara. Uh, there's a Toy House Factory KO version of this that gets rid of the butt flap. And then looking at the Citizen Stacks by KFC, that is a stylized version that's a little bit bigger. And I already think Takara's is too big. So KFC's is way too big, in my opinion. But I think it's cool that they even made it. So looking at more of these 1986 movie bots, uh, looking at RC, probably the most controversial of these. And with it, it's up to your preference. So far, I don't think any company's nailed it. I don't even think Takara is going to nail it. I think Takara might get the closest. I have my issues with fans toys. I like Toy Worlds because I think she looks more like the RC that I think, in my mind, she's a bit tall and I like tall. And There's a, there's a lot to it. Uh, MMC I don't have it yet, but I got it on the way, so I'm going to actually check out the MMC version. And of course, I'm going to check out Takara's. I'll have better recommendation after I've seen all of them. So when it comes to Cup, yeah, I'm using an old picture here, but on the right you have Fans Toys, in the middle you have X Transbots version. What do I recommend? Here's what I actually recommend. If, if, if X Transbots comes out soon, I'd pick up X Transbots at retail price because the Fans Toys one's gone through the roof. And I never even anticipated Fans Toys going through the roof because I always thought that the X Transbots would have been better anyway, but we'll see when I do a comparison. So for Hot Rod, I personally like Hoodlum better. Fansway's Hoodlum has better paint, better aesthetic. It just looks and feels so much more premium than the Takara piece of plastic that they made. The Takara one is a better transformation. The Takara one does have a better alt mode, but I don't care as much about alt mode as I do about bot mode. So therefore, I like Hoodlum the best. I think Hoodlum is a better looking figure in bot mode. For Artemis, you have to go with Takara. I actually like the USA release better than the, the Toys R Us one because that's the one I have and I just got used to it and I like it and I enjoy it. But I haven't had a problem with mine, not one. I don't have any breakage, I don't have any of the issues that everyone says they have with the Takara version. And the DX9 made one, but it's ultra stylized. So I don't even consider it in a G1 collection. Looking at Blur, there are only two options really are the Unique Toys and Fans Toys. And so with the Unique Toys, they, they called it Running Man and they called it, there were a couple of names that they had for this. What I think it was, was that Unique Toys made it and then there was a knockoff of it. Those kinds of things happen, but uh, I don't even know which one I had. But I didn't think I needed Jabber until I got Jabber and having it in hand and comparing them side to side, it is a world of difference how much better the Fans Toys one looks. The transformation's not a lot better. It's not good at all. But in the end, it's worth it. It is worth it to get the Fans Toys Jabber on this one. For Blaster, you gotta go with the KFC version. I like the shiny metallic one. I actually went out of my way even after the the regular plastic red one was released to find the shiny metallic one. This one got me knee deep into third party. Once I found it, I found some guy's whole collection and bought it all, even though I didn't expect to buy it all. And I bought it all and I so knee deep into third party and I started loving third party. And this figure did it for me, but also with the cassettes, Everybody complains about KFC cassettes. They're all right if you put them on the shelf and display them, they're fine. I do think MMCs are gonna be a lot better, a whole lot better, and way more worth your money. So for Wheelie, you gotta go with x Transwatts Ollie. I know a lot of people complain about it, say that it's not well made and that it doesn't feel masterpiece quality. And yeah, I didn't feel like it was a $60 figure when it came out, I didn't, I, I didn't get it till the second iteration and then the third iteration and I have to say there's die cast in it now a little bit and it's a little bit better but it's not the greatest figure in the world but when you look at it you know it's really X Transbots always nails that aesthetic and it's the best we've got might be the guess best we get for a long time Perceptor obviously Tesla 1.0 we don't know how many years till 2.0 comes out but there's gonna be another fans toys version of Tesla coming out for this figure. 
I think that the Titan Returns one, I think you should snag one up. If you have a big gaping hole for Perceptor, get this guy on your shelf in the, uh, the Titan Returns version is the best one out. Aside from that, he is significantly smaller, but he looks good. You can prop him up a little bit, put him in a different angle or something, and make it work until Tesla 2.0 comes out. The Springer War is crazy and looks a little bit fuzzy. I don't know why. Anyway, I think x is going to win this one. Fans Toys is the uh, sort of winner now. And, of course, uh, the MMC one's great. If you have the open and play... I mean, there's so many options. Just pick one you like. But mine is x Transpots, And I don't have it yet. And I still feel like it's going to be the best. Piggybacking off Springer, I'm going to talk about Cosmos. Again, I think x Transbots is the best one out of all of them. But there's not, in my opinion, a clear winner. Because they all do something a little bit different. First off, x Transbots is much bigger than the rest of your mini bots, which I think he should be as a UFO. Toy World uh, Space Racer looks good also. And then MMC's uh, Omni is a good one. They all are good. I mean, I, I would go with all of them. But... X Transbots is the winner in this one because of the diecast metal, the feel, and it's a pretty solid transformation. Lastly, there's Make Toys, and Make Toys made their contact shot, and then they also made a version of Hardhead and a version of Chrome Dome. We're waiting for the Brainstorm and these other ones coming out. They have not given any guidance on those, but as for the Headmasters, I think Yes Model made some KOs of them, but let me know what you think about this 2020 Buyer's Guide. What figures do you like the most? What do you recommend on the Autobot side of things? Like, subscribe to the Hanger out.